cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and it's been a little longer since my last video because I took some personal time to go on some trips. So I went to Yosemite and climbed up to the top of Yosemite Falls. That was beautiful. And just this last weekend, I visited this small little arts town in Arizona called Bisbee. It's a really cool place and it's got a lot of really unique people. And one of those people was this gentleman who goes by the name of the Blues Wizard. He owns a little shop there where he builds guitars out of found objects, not too different from my body snatcher over here. And while we visited his shop, I saw this thing and I just had to buy it. So I'm guessing very few of you have seen this instrument before. In fact, I hadn't seen it until just yesterday when I bought it. Uh, this is a pretty rare instrument. It's called the electric sitar. This is just a really cool hybrid instrument. It's got these six strings that are tuned just like an electric guitar and play the same way, but it's got a special bridge that gives it that Indian sitar sound. And then there's also an additional 13 strings on the top here for a little flourish that you can just strum. It's totally out of tune right now, but it's really cool. I just had to get it being such a big fan of stringed instruments. The Blues Wizard played a few tunes on this thing in his little shop and I just loved the sound immediately. I had to have it. So despite how rare it is, we chatted a bit. He's a really great guy and uh, I bought it off of him. He let me take this beautiful instrument off of his hands. So I love it. It's super cool. It's super crazy looking, right? So I decided to make a project out of it so I could share it with you guys today. For one thing, it's got this big crack on the bottom that I have to fix. So I'm going to be gluing that together. And then there's also this panel here that covers all the internal parts. It seems like it's been replaced with just some acrylic and it's kind of flimsy. So I'm going to try to make a better part for that 3D printed. And I'm also going to make some, uh, some little caps for the strap so that it definitely doesn't fall off because I don't want this thing getting any more injured than it already is. So if you're as curious about this thing as I am, keep watching and we're gonna go ahead and fix this thing up and hopefully I'll be able to play it for you at the end of this video. Let's get right to it. Before we get to fixing that crack, I'm gonna deal with this panel on the back so that I have something to work on while the glue is drying. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew this to see what we're working with. Opening this up, it's pretty clear that someone jerry-rigged this secondhand solution, sandwiching that acrylic circle with this strip of masonite to hold the lid in place. This little square of masonite was also loose on the inside of the guitar, and that seems to be the tab that fell off from the inside here. So that's probably why someone came up with this solution in the first place. But even with just those two teeth, I think I can still make a part that twists into place and uses those tabs to hold itself flush to the guitar. I'll start out by using my digital caliper to measure all kinds of different dimensions here so that I have references to bring into Fusion 360 when I'm designing my lid. In Fusion 360, I'll use those dimensions to recreate the hole in the guitar, as well as modeling in those tabs, so that I can build my solution around it. Once I have my reference, I'll do a cross section right through the middle, and then I'll sketch on that same plane and start drawing out a revolve. I'm basically creating this disc that sits flush against the back of the guitar, and also has these grooves that interface with those two tabs which is what's gonna hold it down. Next, I'll draw this little end stop that will hit that tab when this lid is in its closed position. So we've got that little block in the groove on this one end, and then on the other end, we need an opening so that we can actually get the tabs into place. So I'll do that by cutting away half of this groove, like so. I added a couple fillets and chamfers just for style, but that's pretty much all there is to this mechanism. It's just this half groove that you can twist onto those tabs. One more thing I'm gonna do is cut away some extra material since I don't really need this thing to be so thick. So from the bottom here, I'm gonna create some offset sketches that I can cut away to basically create a shell of these thicker pieces of plastic. So there's one half and I can do the same thing to this other half as well. There we go. That groove is gonna need a little bit of support material but overall, it's a really simple print. I'll send that part to the printer, and in the meantime, we can fix this big crack on the bottom. To close this thing as much as possible, I need a few points of pressure to clamp this together. 
So I'm gonna have this large clamp spanning the guitar to kind of push this crack inward, and then I'll also clamp it together the short way. I'll just use some regular tight bond wood glue, which should do a good job holding together this guitar body that's made of masonite and particle board. I use a generous amount of glue, and then just use this piece of paper to kind of push the glue into that crack. Then I'll go ahead and clamp this down, starting with this long clamp, and I'm just using these microfiber cloths to make sure I don't damage the guitar. At the same time, I'll apply this second clamp from the top and bottom, and then close that out until it starts squeezing the glue out. Wood glue actually performs better when it's not clamped too tight, so I'll just clamp it enough to close the crack up, and then I'll use a damp paper towel to clean away the excess wood glue. After about 30 minutes, I can remove the clamps and you'll see the crack stays closed. So let's go ahead and work on this backside, which has a much larger crack. I'm pretty much gonna do the exact same thing for this crack on the back. I'll just use a few more clamps since I've got a much larger area to hold together. Here it is after another 30 minutes and it's looking much better. The crack is definitely still visible, but it's being held together with that glue now, so I'm not worried about it expanding. I wasn't able to completely close that vertical crack, but I'm just gonna fill that up with wood glue to hold it together as well. I'll use some masking tape to cover up that crack from the inside. That way I can fill it with glue without worrying about the internals getting covered in glue. I'm gonna carefully rest this guitar upside down so the crack is at the top, and then I'll just pour in that tight bond. I'll keep filling that up until it's almost completely filled with glue. So during that time, I was printing that plate that we designed in Fusion 360, and here it is off of my CR10. Removing the support from inside that groove was easy enough with this metal clay tool, and there we go. There is a bit more tolerance than necessary, but when it's twisted into place, this lid fits nice and snug, and it does exactly what it needs to do. Another problem I noticed was that the acrylic guard here was loose and it could actually hit the strings on this little harp. So I'm gonna need to design some new spacers to properly hold it in place. I'll just go ahead and take out these four screws and you can see this one spacer was actually tightened to the point where it pushed through the masonite and kind of wrecked the surface here. So I'm gonna measure the size of that damage and make my new spacers a little wider so that it covers that up and creates a better support. Here are those spacers printed out in the same translucent red PLA that I got from Matter Hackers, which I think makes a nice accent color for this guitar. I'll put those spacers into place, reattach the acrylic plate, and now it fits nice and snug and works as intended. Next up, I'm gonna measure these strap buttons. That way I can design a lock to hold the straps into place. So once again, I'll get all the measurements I need to design it in Fusion. And I came up with a pretty simple solution that uses two parts. One that slips into place and holds down the strap, and then a second part that screws in from the top to lock it into place. I've got my measurements, I've got my idea, so I can quickly whip that up in Fusion 360 and print it out on my CR10. Here are the two parts printed out, and they thread together just great. So I'm going to attach this cool sun strap, and then I'll try out my design. It's a pretty snug fit, but this model works just as intended, holding that strap into place so there's no chance of it falling off. All right, I'm jumping around quite a bit with this project, but I decided to try one more modification. I'm going to fill that crack once more with a mixture of wood glue and gold spray paint to try to mimic the look of Japanese kintsugi, which is the art of repairing broken pottery with a gold lacquer to appreciate the beauty in the fact that it's broken. I sucked up my mixture into this plastic syringe and injected it into the crack and wiped it away just like I had earlier. For some reason, the paint ended up turning more of a copper brown color, but I'm still pretty happy with the effect. Now it's time to tune these 13 strings, and I don't have the appropriate harp tuning wrench, so I'm just going to use this small monkey wrench at first. I started by tuning all the strings in descending half steps, but when strummed all together, it doesn't sound all that great.
I opened up Logic on my Mac and came up with this set of notes that sound better when played together. I retuned the strings to match those notes, and now I can play them as a single flourish. There's no set tuning for these strings, and I might be adjusting them often, so I decided to design an adapter that would make it easier for me to tune these strings in the future. I printed this adapter in MakeShaper ABS, and it's designed to fit on a standard ratchet. That fit perfectly on my first try, although the other end is a little bit too tight to fit onto these tuning pins. Rather than reprinting this part, I'm just going to use my heat gun to soften up the ABS. This is actually beneficial in two ways. For one thing, the heat anneals the part and makes it a little bit stronger. And now that it's soft, I can just fit it over that tuning pin. This creates a perfect fit, which further decreases my chances of breaking this adapter. One more thing I can do to strengthen this part is acetone smooth it so that the layers melt together. The tuning pins on this sitar are quite hard to turn, so I'm pulling all the stops to make this adapter as strong as possible. And in the end, it paid off because it works perfectly. Alright, this thing is all fixed up and tuned, so I suppose you want to hear what it sounds like now. So that's me trying to play it like a sitar, but of course you can also play it like an electric guitar and get a really nice funk sound. This thing can be played in any number of ways to get some really interesting sounds. I've got to say guys, considering how unique this electric sitar is to begin with, on top of the fact that I've got 3D printed components on it, I'm pretty sure this is the coolest thing I own. The fact that I was able to print out all these random little components that would be so hard to find just makes me love 3D printing that much more. It's awesome. This thing is awesome. I'm a happy camper right now. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I loved making it, seeing the process and my little show and tell. And I'm curious, if you could make some additional modifications to this thing, what would you do? I'd love to keep working on it. Let me know in the comments, alright? So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.